Our scripture reading uh, can be found on page 221 in the New Testament portion of your pew Bible, if you would like to follow along, taken from uh, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, and I will be reading from verse 5 through verse 12, the end of the, the, end of the section. Again, it's on page 221, if you would like to follow along. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children, for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his child. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now, discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. One of my favorite movies is uh, the old black and white classic that was filmed back in the early 1940s called Casablanca. The film begins with the narrator explaining that during World War II, many people wanted to escape from Europe. They wanted to get to America. And the city of Lisbon in neutral Portugal was the most popular port of exit. But getting to Lisbon required travel documents, which were very difficult to come by. Now. Over in North Africa, in Casablanca, the most popular nightclub in the city was called Rick's Place. Rick, of course, was played by Humphrey Bogart. Everybody went to Rick's, including Victor Laszlo, the, the famous resistance leader, as well as German soldiers led by Major Strasser who were there to thwart Laszlo's attempts to escape to freedom. And while, while there at the club, the, the soldiers took over Sam's piano and while swilling their beer, started drunkenly singing their songs of conquest and power. You know, eins, 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 you know, and they're singing away and having a good time. But Laszlo, went to the conductor of the club's band and instruct him to play La Marseille, the national anthem of France. The, the man is shocked and, and, and fearful of the consequences. He, he turned to Rick, who gave him the nod. And immediately, the brass players leapt to their feet and the clear, heroic notes rang out, and in a moment, everyone in the club was on their feet, joining in the singing of the anthem. <clears throat> At that moment, the camera zoomed in on the French actress, Madeleine Lebeau, playing the, the role of Yvonne in the movie, and as she sang, you could see the tears just streaming down her face as she sang the anthem. And in reality, just a year earlier, the actress and her husband had escaped 
from Nazi-occupied France and were able to get a visa to Portugal with the help of the Portuguese Consul General, Sousa Menendez, who disobeyed orders to give her and thousands like her the means to escape. Of course, in the movie, Major Strasser is upset by this display of defiance and shouts to his men, sing louder, sing louder. But of course, they're completely drowned out by the combined voices of free people giving expression to their dreams of liberty in the midst of such cruel oppression. So the major, not one to take defeat lightly, ordered that the club be closed immediately. And there were many threats, there were many problems left to be solved and sorted out. But because of that moment of musical triumph, you know that the movie will end well. Part of the power of the movie came from the fact that it was about things taking place in the world at that moment. And it gave expression to the things that people were thinking about and, and the fears they were feeling. Perhaps like you, I've been seeing a lot of Ukrainian flags as I drive through the community. And I've heard the Ukrainian national anthem sung a number of times. In English, the, the words to the anthem are, the glory and freedom of Ukraine has not yet perished. Luck will still smile on us, brother Ukrainians. Our enemies will die as the dew does in the sunshine. And we, too, brothers, will live happily in our land. We'll not spare either our souls or bodies to get freedom, and we'll prove that we, brothers, are of Cossack kin. You see, Mr. Putin thought that reality was based upon the number of troops he could put into the field, the, the number of tanks, the amount of military hardware he could bring to bear. He thought numbers were reality. Mr. Zelensky seems to know that there was a deeper reality within the spirit, within the hearts of his people. In an effort put together by the UN and, and the Red Cross this past week, civilians who had been sheltering in the Mariupol steel plant were transported to safety. Uh, arriving at Zaborosha, they were described by the reporters who met them as being traumatized and in shock. These people had been living underground, hearing the explosions and the, the, the sound of the fighting all around them, but had very little idea what was actually happening. And when they finally emerged into the daylight, the city they had grown up in was, was gone. Everything about their lives was now in ruins. All of the familiar things, all of the touchstones of their lives were gone. So many of the things that had given them meaning and purpose and a personal identity were, were ruined. And they felt totally shattered. Arriving in Zaporosha, the most frequent request was for a priest. That's what they were most hungry for, a priest who would come with the symbols of their faith and affirm their identity as to who they were and whose they were. And so we have gathered together this morning to worship God. It's an idea that some people in this world would say is, is not real, it's, it, it's, it's bogus. But your presence here this morning suggests that you know otherwise. Ritual 
symbol, scripture, ceremony, music, brings us into another truth, a different reality from our mundane and often anxious existence. As we worship together, as we sing together, our hearts can be touched by that which is lasting and that which is real and eternal. Today, of course, is, is Mother's Day. Back in the 1930s, uh, a Swiss developmental psychologist, Jean P uh, Piaget, published his study on the way children develop. You see, well, a, a physician can take their height and, and their weight and jot down a dozen other numbers giving an indication of the child's overall physical health, Piaget began to document the many social and psychological steps a child goes through as they become a productive, balanced human being. So many things go into the making of a well-adjusted person. There are so many important foundation stones that are set down when they are still tiny. As, as this little baby, as this toddler, as this young child begins to learn that they are loved, they are valued, the world is a safe and predictable place. They can try new things. They can even fail without being ashamed and without losing their, their zest for, for, for life. So often, it is the mother that spends the most time with the child and lays down those important emotional, social, religious foundation stones that will be so important for the rest of their lives. So with this idea in mind, this morning I decided to look at the scriptural truth behind that favorite hymn that begins with the words, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. And the hymn continues by focusing on just a couple of key verses that build the foundation of our faith in God the reality that keeps us grounded even though the earth trembles and the mountains slide into the sea. Verse two and three of the, of, of the hymn could be summarized by saying, don't be afraid. The hymn almost copies Isaiah 41.10, which reads, do not fear, I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And then the next verse is almost a copy from Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Well, superficially, it might sound like I'm describing a, a new superhero from Marvel Comics that cannot be harmed by the problems of life. <laughs> well, we, we all know better, don't we? We all know how vulnerable our mortal bodies are to being injured or diseased or, or broken. Certainly, our mortal bodies can and will be destroyed. But that doesn't affect God's love for us and for the eternity which follows this life. There is a doorway that we are all headed towards where we will leave behind all that is mortal and of the earth and enter into the eternity that God has prepared for us. The Apostle Paul describes our earthly existence as being like living in a tent. 
something temporary, something okay in an emergency, maybe okay in the summer, but not something you want to be in all year long. And he says, the tent will wear out, but ultimately it will be replaced by a fine building that God has prepared. You know, the problem addressed in this hymn is, is not death. The problem is the fear of death, the fear of change, the fear of the, the loss of relationships and the loss of all that is familiar to us. The problem is that rather than trusting God's promise that, that God's got us, oh, well, we'd prefer to, to play it safe rather than trusting that God may challenge us to, to move in a new direction or try something different, eh, it's easier to put it off for a little while. Let's defer that. Let, let's delay that. The problem is being cautious, clinging to the status quo, when God would have us be courageous. Verse 4 of the hymn may have been uh, a reflection from the passage in 1 Peter, may have used that verse of Paul as its, as its inspiration. Uh, For a little while you have had to suffer various trials, but just as gold is put into the fire to remove the dross or, or, or the corruption, so you are being purified by the trials and by the difficulties that you go through. In other words, the pain, the difficulties of this life have the potential to transform us and make us different. The writer of Hebrews said with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere man do to me? Actually, they can do a great deal of harm. We all know that. During World War II, the roads of Europe were filled with refugees fleeing Nazi tyranny. Portuguese Consul General Sousa Menendez had been given instructions from his government not to issue any visas. The door to Portugal was closed. But the plight of these poor refugees deeply troubled his conscience until finally he made up his mind he would do what he could to help the thousands fleeing the Nazis. He threw open the doors to his office. He began signing visas by the hundreds. The crowds were were so great, he eventually set up his desk out on the sidewalk called in his relatives to make an assembly line to to speed the process. Oh, he was warned by his superiors that violations would be considered disobedience, would lead to discipline. But he responded saying he would rather be with God against man than with man against God. Eventually, there was a disciplinary proceeding. He was dismissed without a pension. Soon, he was forced to find his meals at local soup kitchens. He died a couple of years later in abject poverty. But his decision had saved the lives of tens of thousands of people including such notables as Salvador Dali and and, and his wife, H.A. and Margaret Ray, carrying their unpublished manuscript for Curious George, which would be published when they got to uh, America. Uh, The actress, Madeleine Lebeau, and her husband, who who appeared in the movie Casablanca, the Rothschilds of of banking fame, and, and so many Hundreds and thousands of others saved because this man saw there was something more important than his own life. So in conclusion today, let us sing together this great hymn of faith, knowing that while this life may bring pain and disappointment, it's all in 
God's hands, and the difficulties are transforming us and preparing us for the eternity to come. How firm a foundation, hymn number 179.